In this video, we will take a look at some of the problems you could encounter if you're building a driveway and you are either using no rebar or um, some rebar. And let's go ahead and get started. Here we have four 10 foot sections of concrete and our concrete is six inches thick. We have a rebar grid in here and uh, it's, uh, it's uninterrupted. There are no cuts in, in the rebar at all, no splices. And the rebar, for the most part, will be connecting the next slab. And this is uh, the video. This kind of came out of a question that I received from a video I did years ago. And I'll put a link in here to that on how to build a driveway in sections. And in the video, I have the rebar um, going in between, just like this. The form boards are actually notched over the rebar. And I understand that it's going to be easier just to form this stuff up in sections and um, pour it. But uh, by the time you're done watching the video, hopefully you have a better idea about how the rebar, when it's set up like this, can connect the entire driveway together and seems to be the best way to build something like this. So here we have the slabs in there and we have a 20 foot by 20 foot driveway without any soil erosion at all. But wait a minute, now we have some soil erosion so we could have some problems. This is usually what creates most of the problems for a driveway. It's going to be soil washing out from underneath the driveway, soil settling because it wasn't compacted, um, some type of soil movement that's raising the concrete up and then lowering it down through um, drying out and getting wet. And then of course we have tree roots. You know, a tree root grows underneath the soil, I mean the uh, driveway and it can raise it and uh, do considerable damage. But by joining everything together here with the rebar, we're going to, it's going to take a lot more pressure to move this. And some of the smaller pockets won't even be affected because the rebar is going to be connecting everything together and holding it in place. And again, this pocket goes all the way through and it's just there for um, the purpose of the video. You know, you're not going to have this exact situation, but not uncommon to have a situation where you have concrete a concrete driveway poured and you might have a round pocket something settling and you can actually um, you know stomp on it with your foot and hear that it's hollow underneath and and nothing happened you know you drive your car over it day after day and you don't ever have a problem with it however that's probably not going to be the case if you don't use any rebar at all you'll actually have sections of it just crack off and then settle down and you could end up with large areas where it's cracked sticking up because you don't have anything connecting it together and you don't even have anything connecting the concrete the individual slabs together in sections so you could end up with some larger cracks like this so larger cracks um, rising and sinking sections of the driveway creating difficult surfaces to walk on now let's take a look at another situation where we install rebar just for each individual slab, but we don't connect the slabs together with the rebar. And if that's the case, you could end up with smaller cracks throughout the individual slabs. The rebar is going to hold the damaged section together a little better than no rebar at all. So you're not going to end up with as, with as many um, sharp variations. You know, um, you know, you might have an eighth of an inch lip here. You know, you're not going to have a half inch lip. But in the areas where you don't have any rebar, you the sky's the limit. I've seen it just push the uh, slab up, you know, a foot. You know, it just gets a, it gets a little nuts. I mean, my neighbor's house, I ended up cutting some trees down for him um, probably eight years ago, something like that. They had three large trees 
and these trees pushed the driveway up and the garage. It's just uh, unbelievable what a tree root can do. So without any rebar, you could end up with a situation like this. You know, smaller cracks that aren't going to be as wide. They might not be a quarter of an inch wide, but um, you might have more of them throughout the project. Now, for those of you who didn't really know what I was talking about when I said that the rebar didn't connect the slabs together, we just used individual frames like this then uh, this should give you an idea of what I was talking about. And of course, this is going to be easier for you to pour all of this in sections than obviously notching the form boards around the rebar. I got that. But hopefully now you understand why I'm having you notch the form boards that are going to be on the inside here around the rebar. So if we have an area where we're not connecting anything. You can just plan on this stuff moving all over the place. Especially if you have soil settlement issues, erosion, or a large diameter tree root that might not be as perfectly straight as this one growing underneath one or both of your concrete slabs. So hopefully this video helps. Hopefully it makes sense. The reason why I'm showing you to notch over the forms and when you're pouring your driveway in sections. So I don't think you would use something like this if you weren't going to pour something in sections. But uh, I think by now you should understand the importance of having the rebar connect everything together.